Hello, welcome to basic setup of Vista 20 Home Alarm System Part 6. Here's a quick list of the previous subjects covered in my series, as well as easy to click on links to go back and watch them. Today, we're going to get some hands on programming experience on programming zones. I'm excited, this is the first chance I get to use my training center I built for home alarms. We have a simulated house with all the doors and windows and such, as well as the capability to open and close the doors and windows. This way we can try out our programming to see if it actually works. Remember back in part 5, you went to the programming guide and you pulled up this zone programming worksheet. The zones we will program today are located at the top of this form. Zones 1 through 8 are all hardwired zones in this panel. And as we covered in our last video, all the pre-programmed values are shown right here. We took a look at our house, then drew an architectural representation of the house. Using this diagram, you can now assign your zones. You then inspected each zone to determine what sensors would be required to properly protect that zone. The sensors were then wired together, hopefully using an end-of-line resistor, and attached to the alarm control panel. Finally, we can now begin the documentation that we need to have an efficient alarm system. Copy the names of all your zones over to the worksheet as shown. Let's start programming. Open up your control panel, then enter program mode. 4112800 asterisk. Oops, that's not what I expected to see. It's telling me I got a problem in zone 3. Let's go take a look at it. We can see the window is open. That's an easy fix. Close it. Once the window is closed, your alarm panel becomes much more cooperative. Please bear with me while I look back in time and see how I could have avoided this horribly embarrassing mistake. The alarm panel clearly told me to hit asterisk for faults. Because I ignored this message, it returned the favor by ignoring every button I pushed until I got to the asterisk. At this point, the alarm panel told me what it felt I was doing wrong. And that is that all doors and windows must be closed in order to enter programming mode. Okay, now that we finally know what we're doing, let's enter programming mode again. A display of installer code 20 means you've successfully arrived at this destination. Enter asterisk 56 to start programming your zone properties. What in the world does that screen mean? In a roundabout way, it's actually asking you, is this zone hardwired or is it RF? Set to confirm. Hardwired zone, RF zone. We want hardwired. We can now start programming zones 1 through 8 using the hardwired menus. To see the menus in advance, go to your installation and setup guide, and section 5 will describe this process. You'll recognize the screen that we just did. The next page shows settings used in both RF and hardwired zones, but we'll find here on page 3, we don't need to do it. That's RF only. And as we finish up, you'll find the panel is smart enough to show you only the menus you need to see. Let's see, where were we? Oh yes. Set to confirm? Yes. On this screen we see two different numbers. The first number enters 00 to quit zone programming. The second number tells you what your current zone is. And you'll become very acquainted with this button right here, the asterisk. It will do two things for you. The first is to input information that you've actually entered. The second, if you press it without entering information, it will accept the pre-programmed default value. The good news is, the folks at Honeywell did a great job of pre-programming this panel for the average house. Here you can see a spreadsheet that I've created for programming the zones for my simulator. You can see there's an asterisk in nearly every field. The information shown in orange is the only information we actually have to change. Zone types and report codes. Let's continue programming. The first screen in each zone will be your summary screen. This will tell you how the zone is currently programmed, whether it be default values or previous programming. Let's learn to read this alphabet soup. On the far left, you see ZN. This represents the current zone you're looking at. Then there's ZT. This means zone type. Currently, zone 6 is a perimeter zone. The P is what partition this zone is in. Then we have RC, report codes. We'll be clearing all those out. HWRT means you're hardwired. EL means you're programmed as an end-of-line resistor. And the 1 means loop 1. Loops are normally associated with RF modules, 
So I can only assume that everything that's hardwired is considered to be loop 1. This part of the summary screen becomes quite difficult to read after the first eight zones. So here's a brief look at the installation manual, and it's half-hearted attempt to kind of explain what you're looking at. After reviewing the summary screen, simply press asterisk to continue. The zone type is currently set to 9, which is a fire zone. I want to change that to a tamper zone. Type in the number 07. It says 24 hour audible. That means this circuit is always armed. If you have any components mounted outside, such as a siren or a light, they have to have tamper switches on them. This ensures the alarm will sound if anyone messes with it. Asterisk to accept. Here you enter your partition. We covered partitions in part 4. We'll accept partition 1. The next screen is report codes. The report code is a code used to tell the monitoring company what kind of breach has occurred. Clear the code by typing 00. I clear the code for two reasons. The first is, I don't want strangers protecting my family. In a later video, I'm going to show you how to have the alarm panel call you personally. The second reason? If there are report codes and a fault occurs, the panel tries to call out. Your panel will report communications errors. Clearing those errors is a real pain in the behind. Asterisk to accept. Response time is default to 1. Accept. Here we have our final summary screen. This reflects the changes that you've made into the programming. As you can see, zone type and report code have been changed. Accept the summary. We finally make it to our last question. The screen is asking us if we want to name the zone. For example, do you want the alarm panel to say master bedroom instead of zone 3? I think we can all agree the answer is, well, duh, yeah. But naming the zones would be a lot easier later using our asterisk 82 menu. So select a default, no. My part 7 video will cover zone naming. We now know how to program a zone. Before programming the rest of the zones, let's do some administrative work. Remember our programming worksheet? Well, we just changed zone 1 from zone type 9 to zone type 7. And changed the report codes to 0. Continue updating your report codes. When you get to zone 5, we'll change the zone type from 3 to 2, which is an entry-exit zone. Again, continue update and report code. Change zone 7 from zone type 3 to zone type 7 for your safe. That's a 24-hour tamper. And there you have it. Our documentation is complete. The remainder of this video will show you the keyboard programming for the remaining zones. It's not terribly interesting, but it is useful if you're trying to learn how to program. If you're leaving now, I hope to see you in part 6, where we learn how to name our zones. I did forget to mention, if you want to program any zone other than what's shown on the screen, simply type in the two-digit number and then hit asterisk and you'll go straight to that zone. Okay, back to programming zone 2. Zone 2, except. Everything is okay except report code, except. Zone type is entry exit, except. Partition 1, except. Report code, clear, enter 0, 0, except. Hardware type is end line resistor, except. Response time is 1, except. New summary screen, report code has been cleared. Do not wish to alpha program at this time. Zone 3, except. Everything is okay except report code, except. Perimeters, okay, except. Partition 1, except. Report code, clear, 0, 0, enter. Hardware type is end line resistor, except. Response time is 1, except. New summary screen, report code, been cleared, except. Do not wish alpha program, except. Zone 4, except. Everything is okay except report code, except. Perimeter, except. Partition 1, except. Report code we will clear, 0, 0, except. Hardware type is end line resistor, except. Response time is 1, except. New summary screen, report codes are clear, except. Alpha programming, we will say no. Zone 5. Except, on the summary screen we'll be changing two things, zone type and report code. Except, perimeter we do not want, we'll change that to 0, 2. Now entry exit 2, except, 
Partition 1, accept. Report code, clear, 0, 0, accept. Hardware type is end all line resistor, accept. Response time, 1, accept. New summary screen now shows zone type of 2. Report code of 0, accept. Alpha programming, no. Zone 6, accept. Everything's okay except report code, accept. Perimeter is okay, accept. Partition 1, accept. Report code, clear, 0, 0, accept. Hardware type is end line resistor, accept. Response time is 1, accept. New summary, cleared, report code, accept. Alpha program, no. Zone 7, accept. We will be changing the zone type and the report code, accept. Perimeter we do not want, we will change that to 07. Now we 24 audible for our safe, accept. Partition 1, accept. Report code, we wish to clear, 00, accept. Hardware type is end line resistor, accept. Response time is 1, accept. New summary screen, zone type 7, and report code, accept. Do not wish to alpha program, accept. Zone 8, accept. Everything is okay except report code, accept. Perimeter is okay, accept. Partition 1, accept. Report code, clear, zero, zero, accept. Hardware type is end line resistor, accept. Response time one, accept. New summary screen, no report codes, accept. Do not wish alpha program, accept. Next zone available is zone nine. We do not have an expansion module, so we cannot program this zone. So you exit by typing zero, zero. Then you exit programming by asterisk 99. And you're out of programming. Pressing any key will turn the backlighting on so that you can film what you're doing. Well, that's it. This video ran a little long, so sorry about that. Until next time, have a great day. I guess I should throw in a disclaimer. I am not a professional alarm installer. I'm just some guy that likes to teach himself new skills, then pass it on to others. Thanks for watching.